Okay. Questions? One last big concept coming up. So, all set? Fasten seat belts? Let's go. Pumping lemma, great fun. Okay? So, here is a one line reminder of the one for regular languages. If you have a language that's regular, then all long words can be pumped to produce more words in the language. Okay? I'm hoping you're all fresh with the pumping lemma in your brains after midterm two, which by midterm one, which by the way, remind me I have to give you back after class. I shouldn't have said it now, but okay. All right, that's the one line reminder of the statement. Here's the one line reminder of the proof. Long words must revisit some state. Remember that? Pigeonhole principle, right? That was the key thing that made this work. You must revisit some state, and because you do that, you have a loop, and that loop can be pumped. Okay? Essentially, that was the proof. Okay? Now, here is the one line statement for context free languages. It's exactly the same, except now I'm talking about context free languages. Okay? And here is the proof, again in one line. We're going to go over this a little bit more detailed, of course. Instead of talking about uh, how words behave, we're talking about parse trees. So if I have a long word, the parse tree will have a repeated variable. And once again, this repetition is going to be based on the pigeonhole principle. Okay? So look out for that. So in this parse tree, there's going to be this long path which has a repeated variable in it. Because it has a re repeated variable, I'm going to be able to pump words and get a whole bunch of new words in the language. Okay? <clears throat> so this is the idea. I've got this very long word, and it's so long that the parse tree is very deep. And because it's very deep, it has a very long path in it somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. And that parse tree has just non-terminals all along this path except right at the very end. And the path is so long that I exhaust all the set of variables that I have. Okay? So I will have a repeated non-terminal in exactly the same, with exactly the same line of reasoning I had a repeated state in the DFA when I proved the pumping lemma for regular languages. Okay? So that's the idea. So, to make this work, all I need is this sort of relation between the length of the string and the depth of the sparse tree. Okay, so let's just fix that. So <clears throat> suppose I have a, a, a language that is in fact in a grammar that's ex in fact in Chomsky normal form. Okay, so I have a grammar for this language, except maybe the empty string, and that grammar is in Chomsky normal form. Now, because it's Chomsky normal form, every parse tree is a binary tree. Yes, because every variable generates at most, either it generates a terminal or it generates two non-terminals, okay, and so on. Okay, now because it's a binary tree, I know that if the height of the tree is k, then it actually has at most so many leaves, okay? Now you can easily prove this by induction. I'm not going to prove it. Okay. Now remember, the yield of the tree, which is you look at what terminals you get at the bottom. Oh, this, of course, is not possible, but something like this. All, all the terminals that you get at the bottom, that's the yield. That is, of course, at most the number of leaves that this tree has. Okay. So if I have a tree of height k, then it must yield a string of at most that much length. I'm just going to turn this around. Suppose the grammar has k variables, and I have a tree that yields a very long string, meaning it's longer than this bound 2 to the k minus 1. Then I know that the tree has to have height at least k plus 1. Okay? I've just turned fact 2 around on its head. So what I'm going to have is in the tree, in the parse tree, there's s. And then there's this going to be this very long path. 
Okay, because the height is very large, there has to be at least one very long path in it, and that path has length at least k plus 1, which means it's got k plus 2 vertices along the way. Okay? The top vertex is the root, which is s, and the bottom vertex is some terminal, k plus 2 vertices in total. One of them's a terminal, so k plus 1 non-terminal vertices along the way. But I only have k variables. So somewhere along the way, there is a repeated variable. Okay? That's all the proof is saying. So I have a long tree. The parse tree must have some repeated variable along the way. OK. Now how does this help? In the DFA, in the DFA case, the repeated state meant I had a loop. Okay? In this case, it's going to mean that basically A from A, I can produce another A. And I'm going to generate a whole bunch of words like that. So here is my, product, here is my derivation. I can think of it as proceeding in phases. So first, I look at this parse tree and I say, look, really, the derivation first produced U, A, Y. And then the A got expanded. The A got expanded into VAX. And then finally, the inner A got expanded to W. Okay, so I've just sort of broken the derivation up into stages. But the nice thing is I know that A produced VAX. So I just repeat that any number of times I like. Okay? A produces VAX, which produces VVAXX, and so on. Okay? Here are all the words that must also be valid derivations. Because A can produce A. Do you see the analogy? The analogy is Q can go to Q, so I have a loop. Here, A can produce A, so I have a loop of a sort. Okay? And then if you really want to push the analogy all the way, the going from Q to a final state it corresponds to A finally producing terminals. Okay? All right. So just like before, the actual formal statement is a little bit ugly. But you can, again, break it down into little pieces. Here is a context real. OK, let me back up. Questions at this point? No? Crystal clear? OK. I'm getting lots of thumbs up there. OK. So here's the formal statement. <clears throat> So I have a context-free language. Then there must exist some number such that for all words in the language, if the word is long, then it can be broken up into five parts. Not just three, but five. OK? Now these five parts, they all together, put together, get, get you Z. The middle three parts are not very long. The middle three parts put together are not very long. The V and the X together, important thing to note, together are non-empty. One of them could be empty, but not both. OK? And then, for all I, you can repeat V and X I a number of times, and you'll still get a word in the language. So uglier than the pumping lemma for the regular languages, but same idea. Okay? Give me a long word, I can break it up, and parts of it can be pumped any number of times you like. And there are some constraints on what those parts look like. OK, so here's an example of repeating the derivation A to A zero number of times and twice, okay? and so on. This is how I get all kinds of different words. So here's U, W, Y. Okay. U, V, V, W, X, X, Y. Okay. All right. So just like before, the way you apply this thing is really to show things are not context-free. 